Okay, George, she's all yours. Through for the day, Hobie? I'm through for the weekend. Then you can sweep out all that rice. Do you realize that in the last 24 hours I've flown four couples up to Las Vegas to get married? Ah, what are you beefing about? You make nothing but dough. Yeah, I guess you're right. Mmm, mmm. You know, sometimes I think money isn't everything. That reminds me, I've got to call Myrtle. See you later. Okay. Mr. Carrington? You are Hobie Carrington, aren't you? Yeah. Can we go somewhere where we could talk? I'm listening. Go right ahead. I want to charter your plane. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm taking the weekend off. I just told my mechanic to... Yes, uh... I know what you told your mechanic. But you see, this is very important to me. I have to get to Death Valley. Getting married? Oh, no, of course not. Why should you ask? Because all I've been doing is flying the milk run for Cupid. Now I want to relax. Small restaurant, corner table, soft lights, soft music. Soft shoulders. Why not have dinner with me? That's the best offer I've had today. Where do we go? I have a table reserved in the hotel in Death Valley. Oh, just make out like I didn't say anything. Oh, I, I'll pay you well. I'll give you $500. On account. On account? Oh, I'll pay you some more. You see, I might want you to stay there a few days. Now, what about that dinner? You know... I'm just beginning to develop an appetite. By the way, uh, what's your name? Oh, uh, Catherine. Catherine Forrest. Can we leave right away? All right, Miss Forrest. I'll meet you at the plane as soon as I wash up. Hi, Hobie. Well, Bob Donovan. I always had a hunch you'd wind up as a washroom attendant. But then I suppose it's pretty tough for a tired old ex-major to find a job these days. What happened? Couldn't you hock those gold oak leaves you used to sport around the China Burma Theater? The same old hobby. Keeping your eyes and your ears closed and your mouth open. You haven't changed a bit. That's right. The same old hobby that used to risk his neck for you. Remember the time you dropped me off in a Japanese jungle and left me there for three weeks to decode messages for you? Sure. You are the best counter-espionage agent we had. I could use you right now. That is, if the government could. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not going together anymore. Don't you remember? I'm a civilian now. You should see me out some night in my new pinstripe uniform. By the way, what are you doing since you got out? Oh, I'm just changing uniforms, not jobs. Right now, I'm looking for a map. In here? I don't know if I can get you to help me find it. Not a chance. I'm flying charter now. I'm taking a certain young lady up to Death Valley. And I'll be too busy to look for maps. But if I happen to see it, I'll let you know. Huh. I'll be able to find you here in your office, I presume. Go on. You all set, George? Just about. Say, Hobie, there's a storm coming in. You may have to fly over it. I'll put the oxygen in. Okay. Oh, Miss Forrest. Yes? What is it? I'm Miss Forrest. You're Miss Forrest? I thought... Oh, hello, Mr. Carrington. You seem a little confused. This is Miss Catherine Forrest. I used her name because mine is too hard for people to remember. I'm the Countess Maritza de Fasco. Anyway, this is quite all right with you, isn't it, dear? Oh, why, of course. And who are these other people, chaperones? Oh, these are your other passengers. Mr. Van Bush, Mr. Forrest, and Mr. Porter. This is our pilot, Mr. Carrington. How do you do, sir? Hello. Oh, how are you? I'm afraid we may have to fly over some weather. Just what does that mean? Might have to use oxygen. Uh, maybe we better not go then, Kathy. Oh, what's the difference? Let's get going. But uh, I never use oxygen. I... That's all right. You'll be sitting in front with me. I'll take care of you. It sounds rather frightening. What? Sitting with me or using oxygen? Well, maybe I try them both and find out. No, oxygen isn't at all bad. I used it overseas. As a matter of fact, it's quite exhilarating. Really? Yes. I still don't like the idea of all the company. Oh, but we're having dinner together. Are there any special seating arrangements, pilot? Well, Miss Forrest, uh, I mean the Countess, is sitting up front with me. You can make yourselves comfortable any place you like. Thanks. Here's a weather report, Hobie. Oh, here's something else that just came.
Happy landing. to watch the scenery. Oh. Yes, indeed. I wouldn't miss it for the world. How did you happen to pick me for this trip? Oh, you were the only charter pilot available. What do you mean, the only one available? Well, all the other one were booked up solid for the weekend. It must be quite a thrill to be able to handle a plane like you do. Been flying long? A few years. You were a flyer during the war? Uh-huh. Why didn't you tell me you were bringing a whole party of people? Oh, well, it was sort of a dream up at the last moment. You might have trouble getting accommodations at the hotel. They're usually booked up in advance. Oh, I'm sure we'll be able to find something. What's the matter? I don't know. It's looking out and down. It's seems to bother me. Don't you feel well? N no. I think I better go back and sit in the cabin. Oh, uh, Caddy, will you change places with me? Why, sure, I'd love to. Oh, Kathy, uh, let me sit there. I'll be glad to sit up here, Kathy. I don't mind it at all. But I want to sit in the cockpit, Jan. Look, mister, you can't stand up front. Jan, why don't you go back and keep Mr. Porter company? Well, he doesn't need any company. He's fast asleep. You know the only money I can lay my hands on is what I get from Kathy. I've spent what little dad left me. What about the money you made during the war? What money? In a Japanese prison camp on a forsaken island in the Pacific. You've been telling that story so often, Claude. I think you're beginning to believe it yourself. All right. I'll give you some money tonight when we get to Death Valley. What altitude are we flying at? About 14,000. You better put on your oxygen mask. You go back to your seat and fasten your safety belt. Luckily, it's some rough weather. Tell the rest of the people to put on their oxygen masks. for negligence. You probably kicked it loose when you were up here before. Maybe less kicked it loose. Anyway, this is not the time to talk about it. We're coming into Death Valley. Mr. Kangan is right. This is no place to start an argument. Sit down, Van Bush.
do you feel, Miss Forrest? <laughs> a little woozy, but I'll be all right. I'll take care of her. Mr. Callington, are you sure that oxygen hose was connected before we took off? Of course, everything was inspected. What do you expect him to say, Liz? Look, mister, you're asking for it, aren't you? Gentlemen. This won't do anybody any good. We're safely here, and I don't think Kathy will suffer any ill effects. Well, it isn't his fault if she isn't. Oh, stop, Claude. I'm all right. Yes, it seems to me we are all being rather childish. Come on, my dear. Let's go to the hotel. What about our luggage? The pilot will bring it. Give you a hand, sir? Yeah, thanks. I still say it is the pilot's fault. Oh, forget it, Jan. I think he's rather nice. And so does Katty, don't you, dear? Oh, really, I didn't notice him too much. Uh, uh, will you see about the reservations, please, Claude? Oh, sure thing. You have reservations for the Forrest, the Countess de Frasco, Maritza, Gerald Porter, and Jan Van Bush. I'm sure we have. Uh, hello, Countess. Oh, hello, Kathy. Hello, Mr. Walker. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Mr. Porter. How do you do, Mr. Walker? How do you do, Mr. Porter? I should think you two mining engineers would know each other. Where have you operated mostly, Mr. Walker? Well, to tell the truth, I haven't operated much since the war. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Mr. Van Bush, Mr. Walker. How do you, How do? Do, you do? And this is our pilot, Mr. Carrington. Oh, I'm glad to know you. Glad to know you. Will you excuse me? I have a long distance call. Sir, what is our luggage? Well, I was going to bring it up, but I didn't have my union card, so I let the bellboys do it. Oh, we've been trying to get your room, Mr. Carrington, but they're pretty full. You see, we had our reservations here for some time. Well, that's all right. Just put me up in the servants' quarters. We've managed to get Mr. Carrington's room. Here's your key, sir. Thanks. Well, what about that dinner we planned with the soft lights and the music? Is that out? Well, we have been invited to be Mr. Walker's guests, but uh, why don't you come to my room for a cocktail after I freshen up? All right. See you later, then. Hello. Hello. Give me the manager, please. Uh, this is Mr. Van Bush speaking. I have a complaint to make. Somebody has been going through my luggage. Yes. I want a thorough investigation. Hello, Superman. I'm not surprised. You didn't think you could get away from me that easy, did you? I intended to be down here when you arrived, and I intend to stay here. You mean we're roommates? No, neighbors. Look, let's stop this cops and robbers, shall we? It's too late now. Why do you think that you are the only charter plane available? That's why I got a room in a crowded hotel, huh? Oh, that's right. Tell me, did anything important happen on the way down? I'll say it did. Somebody kicked the oxygen tube loose on my plane. Catherine Forrest was almost killed. I'd have been grounded for life. Only this trip you were on is far from a pleasure, John. It's a dangerous mission. Any time that you get international racketeers exploding atomic energy, anything can happen. Why'd you have to pick me for this job? I did enough of your dirty work overseas. Because you're the only one I can trust. That's very flattering. But I don't like being drafted this way. Tell me what's all this squawk about Van Bush saying somebody went through his luggage. Did you find anything suspicious? Yeah. He wears silk underwear. <laughs> Kathy? Yeah? Will you do me a favor? How much is it this time? I need $2,000. $2,000? 
But well, what on earth for? Look, do I have to explain every time I need a little money? But, Claude, this can't go on. I've been giving you so much money these last few weeks. Okay. Put me through the usual third degree. Would you care to join me? Nope. This is business. You cabled me from Honolulu that you had some information on Claude Forrest. That's why I sent for you. Would you be interested in selling that information? Why, Tom, what a question. How much? I think you'll find me generous enough. You know, I have it right here. But uh, tell me, why do you want it? Well, that shouldn't concern you. Let's just say, I don't want to see it get into the wrong hands. This must be the last. All right, but I don't know why you have to be so stingy. After all, it's just as much my money as it is yours, even though Dad did leave it to you. I'm not stingy, Claude. It's just that, well, I can't afford to spend oh, the Oh, forget way... it. Come on, let's get downstairs. They're most likely waiting dinner for us. All right, I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> You gotta get the proper perspective. When international cartels start to work, the life of a human being isn't very important. You think Catherine Forrest looks like a type that would be mixed up with an international cartel? I didn't say that, but I did check on the forest. They gave a house party in Honolulu, and one of their guests was a Korean who was to deliver a certain map of the South Pacific Island to one of our agents. Well, he never got there. He was killed, and the map was never found. How does that tie in with the rest of the party? Because every passenger on your plane was a member of that house party. Well, whom do you suspect? Hmm. It's anybody's guess. Whom do you suspect? What about the Countess? Well, I'll be able to tell you more about the Countess in a couple of minutes. But it might not be what you want to know. I still think you should tell me why you want this information on Claude. Look, Liz, it's none of your business. You're not giving it to me. I'm buying it, and I'm willing to pay a good price. Do you have the money with you? I'll get it after dinner. Well, that reminds me, I'd better be getting downstairs. Yes, and I should get ready too. We'll get together later this evening. Pardon me. I'm glad you're at home. Good evening, Mr. Carrington. Do sit down. Thank you. Are all you foreign women two-fisted drinkers? <laughs> no, the, the second one is for you. Thanks. Martini. And warm, too. Now that we are alone, I want to tell you something. I'm very frightened. Of me? Oh. No, of course not. No. About what happened in the plane this afternoon. You mean the business about the oxygen? Yes. That was meant for me. You remember, I, I was sitting up front with you. That's right. But why should anyone want to kill you? Oh, it's, it's rather involved. You see, I was born on the continent, but I went to an English finishing school, and, and then I married the Count, and when he died, he left me some rather valuable properties. And there are certain peoples who are trying to get those properties. And I'm very frightened. Don't be frightened. But who are these people? It could be anybody on the plane today. Will you? Will you help me? said there's nothing like those English finishing schools. You will help me, won't you? Sure, but who's going to help me? Well, should we get downstairs? You go ahead. I'll join you later. 
I hope you're not too disappointed about not having the dinner we planned. No, it's a funny thing. I just lost my appetite. But I'll see you later. Martini. A double? Yeah. One martini gave me this headache. Maybe two will make it go away. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I've been looking for you, Carrington. Get lost. What's the idea of going through my luggage? Go away and start over again. I'm serious. I demand an explanation. Why don't you start explaining how you happen to kick the oxygen hose loose in my plane? Look, if you're trying to cover up your own negligence by blaming me for that accident, you're talking to the wrong guy. It so happens I intend to marry Miss Forrest. Oh? I'll send her my condolences in the morning. Right now, I don't feel so well. Don't try to change the subject. Why don't you go through my luggage? Look, I've taken all I'm going to from you. You open your yap once more, and I'll close it for you. Oh, yeah? I'd like to see you try that. Don't get up, boys. Is this ring for me, or do I have to buy myself one? Hasn't Getty come down yet, Jan? I haven't seen her. Well, please be a good boy and go and call her room. Tell her we're waiting for her. I, I called your room, but there was no answer. So I rushed downstairs to see if I could find you. G could we go outside and talk? I've been outside. The desert air seemed to knock me right off my feet. You mean you were attacked? Oh, we can't talk here. I'm afraid we'd be overheard. understand why I'm so frightened. At first it was Katie. Now it's you. You haven't anything to worry about. As long as they don't run out of customers. Oh, I thought you meant what you said, that, that you helped me. Sure, sure, I'll help you. What did you find in Jan's luggage? Now, why would I want to go through Jan's luggage? Oh, I, I thought maybe Claude or Katie put you up to it. You see, I... I'm suspicious of everybody, except you. Lovely. We've been looking all over for you. Oh, really? I just sent Jen to call your room. Let's all have a drink, shall we? Hope your head's feeling better, Mr. Carrington. Oh, sure. Walker. Well, I seem to be the first one of your guests who've arrived. Oh, I guess the others will be along presently. It's been that way all along. I'm always the one on time to eat. The rest of them never seem to get hungry. Of course, I took time out for a quick swim, and I wished I'd had time for a horseback ride over the desert. Greatest exercise in the world. Well, you sound like you spent most of your time outdoors. I have, all my life. I've engineered in practically every country. I understood Kathy to say you were in the mining business. Well, uh, geological engineering. Practically the same thing. I find the valuable minerals and let the other fellow make the money out of it. <laughs> looks like I was having a wild goose chase. They told me to call your room. I'm here, Jen. Hobie, Hobie, darling. Why, Irene. Well, this is the most pleasant surprise I've had in weeks. Oh, really? Oh, this is the Countess de Fresco of Maritza. How do you do? You Miss do. Forrest. How do you do? Mr. Van Bush. How are you? And Miss Forrest's brother, Mr. Forrest. How do you do? Miss Allison, an old friend of mine. Yes, indeed. As a matter of fact, we were more than just friends. I used to be Mrs. Carrington. Then I'm sure you two must have a great deal to talk over. Will you excuse me? Uh, yes, come, Kathy. Uh, will you excuse us, Miss Allison? Thank you. Well, what's the matter? Why are you staring at me like that? Because a lot of funny things have happened to me today. Oh, but Hobie, this isn't funny. This is wonderful. 
Would you like to go for a walk in the garden with me? Why didn't you let me know you were back? What do you mean, let you know? I didn't know where to find you. Besides, I didn't think you were interested in hearing from me. The last letter I got from you, I read in a bomb shelter. It's funny how clear it seems. Please sign the enclosed papers. I want a divorce. I spent the whole night with a chaplain talking about it. I know. I'll regret it all my life. You'll regret it. You got married right away, didn't you? Oh, you mean Reggie. But, Hobie, you were gone so long. And Reggie was in a position to do me so much good. After all, he was backing my show. Sure, sure. So what are you doing here? Well, I, I established residence in Las Vegas. I just sneak down here for the weekend. I'm getting a divorce. Show sure flops, huh? Yes, and it was all Reggie's fault. Just because I met Gregory Lawrence. He's a Hollywood producer and in a position to do me so much good. Reggie's pretty narrow-minded, isn't he? Yes, isn't he? But enough of that. Oh, Hobie, this is wonderful. This is like old times. We can have the whole weekend together. You can turn it on and off just like that, can't you? Well, Hobie, I don't know what you mean. Oh, skip it. Anyway, I'm working. I've got a charter flight for the Countess. The Countess? Yeah, you met her when you came in. Oh, that phony. me. Why, she's no more of a Countess than I am. I met her in show business before I met you. She went by the name of Lolly Lorraine. You know what you're talking about? Certainly. She and I worked in an act with Tamburini the Great. We were his assistants. <laughs> the last time I saw her, she was being sawed in half. You didn't say anything about that when you met her. Of course not. I may be a cat, but I'm not that catty. She wants to make like she's a countess. That's all right with me. Excuse me a minute. I'll be right back. What's new? Plenty. A lot of things have been happening. What happened? Unimportant things like me getting hit in the head. Anyway, I got it. You got what? What you've been looking for. I got it from the Countess. How do you like that? What was it? It's an envelope. Had a lot of papers in it. Written in Japanese. You mean to say you had it and you lost it? Yeah. I've been losing a lot of things, and they're all connected with you. For instance? For instance, I just bumped into Irene, the ex-Mrs. Carrington. She might not have been Mrs. X if you'd have given me that leave I asked for when she wanted a divorce. Do you think that would have helped any? Maybe not. Listen, Hobie. I wish I could get you to realize that the job we're doing now might be just as important as fighting a war that we might keep other men from going through what we went through, leaving their wives. Okay, you, know, you can stop waving the flag. I won't back out. Just burns me to think somebody could make me for that envelope. Who made you for it? Just wonder. You think you have a chance of getting it back? It's possible. I'll see you later. Good luck. on the level about the Countess? Of course, I think it was the summer before I met you. Tamburini was looking for some girls to work the audience. You know, pull things out of women's purses. It was always good for a laugh. Yeah, yeah, I bet it was. Anyway, I was in the act when she came. I told her the routine. You know, you could do me a favor. Let's have dinner and we'll talk it over. compliment you on a delicious dinner, Mr. Walker. Oh, thank you. I've eaten all over the world, and I think that's probably the most enjoyable meal I've ever had. Oh, I think it'll be nice having our coffee out here on the terrace. Incidentally, I have some excellent brandy. Wonderful. What do you say, Countess? I would love it, if you give me a few moments to repair the ravages of dinner. What about you, Cathy? Cathy and I are going to take a walk. Yes, it's a beautiful night. Excuse me. We've been here for hours now. When are we going to get down to business? Oh, 
Tanakis? Yes. You must have thought me dreadfully rude this evening. Why? Why, I stare so terribly. For a moment, I thought you were someone I knew. But then I realized how stupid that was of me because the girl that I knew was Paula and... I'll see you later. Yes, dear. Probably shouldn't drink that coffee. Keep me awake nights. You must have taught it a routine. Is that what you wanted? Looks like uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics to me. Well, it's a love letter I wrote to a mummy once. And she's been holding it over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Will you excuse us, Mr. Porter? We have some business to discuss. Well, oh, certainly, certainly. I, I'll just sit here and enjoy the desert air. You know, I'm kind of glad Gregory got tied up at the last minute. Was he going to meet you here? Yes, that's why I came down from Las Vegas. This is much better. Let's don't spoil it. Let's forget about everything. Including Greg? Everything and everybody. Well, aren't you coming in? I told you, I had some unfinished business. Oh, but can't it wait until tomorrow? Look, we've been separated for over four years. You seem to get along all right without me. Now, Hobie Carrington, you know very well it wasn't all my fault. After all, you didn't have to go and enlist. You could have waited till they drafted you. You have things all figured out, haven't you? But of course. Oh, I just love it here. Please. Well, how nice. Where's everybody? Oh, uh, Claude and Mr. Walker are going to talk over some business. You've known Mr. Walker for some time, haven't you? Yes. I met him in Cairo several years ago. Really? Very forceful man, Mr. Walker. Claude isn't in any trouble, is he? Oh, not that I know of. Why? Oh, I just think his nervousness is due to more than the war. I don't like to see Claude get mixed up with the wrong people. You mean Mr. Walker is... I don't know. Something going on. I don't like what happened to Kathy this afternoon. I don't either. It's getting chillier. I think I get a wrap. Don't get up. Listen, Claude, there's no use trying to high pressure me. I'm not ready to do business yet. When I am, you'll know about it. Well, if you want to do it, it's going to be tonight. What about the rush? You know what the rush is. I need money. And if you're not willing to do it, I know someone who is. As a matter of fact, he's waiting for me in Las Vegas now. I don't invest a quarter of a million dollars without considering every angle. You'll never get it any cheaper. No. Oh, Jen, I appreciate the way you feel about me, but... Well, I just don't intend to have you routine my life. You'd be a lot better off if I routine it instead of that good-for-nothing brother of yours. Jen. And he's not the only one. That woman who calls herself a countess, Porter. And as for Walker, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could see him. Jen, I will not have you insulting my friends. But it's quite all right for that uncouth pilot character to insult me. Ex-wife's trailing him while he's drooling over the counters. And you. I'm sure Mr. Carrington's private life is no concern of mine. Hello? Where's Claude? We just left. He said he was going back into the hotel. Are we ready to do business? I guess so. Have you the, uh, document with you? Have you the, um... Well? Why, the little... I mean it, Kathy. You're a silly goose, you need someone to look after you. And you've appointed yourself my custodian. Do you know of anyone better? Jen, please. Kathy. Jen, stop! Stop it! Jen, you heard what the lady said. The lady said stop. Listen, it seems to me you're always butting in when you're not wanted. Yeah, I didn't see the welcome mat rolled out for you. Carrington, I only know one way to deal with you. Don't worry, it's a shallow end. Pay 
ready for this, Carrington? I'm not usually the Sir Galahad type, but you seem to be giving away an awful lot of weight. You've really had a busy evening, haven't you? What with the Countess, me, ex-wives popping up. Oh, Irene. Still in love with her? Lately, I've been wondering whether I ever really was in love with her. Up to now, I thought so. How long has it been uh, since you've seen her? About four years. She divorced me while I was overseas. Oh, that's terrible. When I get married, it will be for keeps. You look like the type that would. Of course, I'd make sure I loved him before I married him. That lets Jan out, doesn't it? Oh, he knows I don't love him. Shall we go in? No, thanks. I think I'll stay outside a while and smoke a cigarette. Then I'll say good evening. It was very nice talking with you, Mr. Carrington. It would have been nicer if she said Hobie. I've been noticing this ring. It's very interesting. Family crest? No, it was Claude's. He bought it back from the Orient, and when he got home, he had it cut down and gave it to me. There's uh, quite an Oriental legend connected with it, though. Really? You must tell me about it sometime. I will. But first, I must find out what it is from Claude. <laughs> he hasn't told me yet. Good night, Hobie. Good night. I remember, you take one lump. Well, now it's two lumps. Oh, thanks. Hey, what happened? Well, I found you lying out on the terrace last night. When you sent my key up to me, I decided I wanted to have a little talk with you. But when I found you, you were in no condition to talk. Well, how'd you get me up here? I bribed a bellboy. I told him you were drunk. Say, what's going on, Hobie? Yeah, I wish I knew. Did it have something to do with that letter? How do you like that? It's gone again. Well, I've got to get back to the room. Thanks for the use of the hall. Don't thank me. I've been waiting for you. Surprised you weren't in your room. What happened to you? Somebody wrapped me in the head. What, again? Yeah. Listen, Hobie. I've got to leave. That's why I wanted to see you. From now on, keep your eyes and your ears open, will you? And stay on your feet. I want to know what's happening. Look, Donovan, I wish you could fix it so I could stay on my feet. I might be able to tell you what's happening. But I can't see very well when I'm lying flat on my back. Well, you better get downstairs. The sheriff wants to see you. The sheriff? Yes. Murder investigation. Walker was killed last night, stabbed to death. I gotta leave. Hey, whose side are you on? The, uh... Medical examination shows that Walker was killed between 11 and 12 last night. 
You all admit you weren't in your rooms, but yet not one of you can prove where you've been. I was on the veranda if anyone cared to look. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've got to get back to that wet suit, Mr. Van Bush. After all, Walker was found in the rock pool. Yeah, but I fell in the swimming pool. That's right, Sheriff. Mr. Van Bush uh, stumbled. Oh, Mr. Carrington can verify that, can't you, Hobie? Mr. Carrington, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're glad. Now, what do you want to see me about? We'll get back to that. By the way, you weren't in your room all night. Where were you? Well, I was, uh... He was with me. You see, uh, Mr. Carrington and I used to be married. We were talking about a reconciliation. Excuse me, I'll get that. Hello? Yes, this is Sheriff Bradley. Fine. You have? <laughs> They'll be interested to know that. Bye. Well, I won't have to detain you folks any longer. They found the murderer. Oh, well, I can oh, get well, dressed. Good. Who was it? The fellow been bothering Walker ever since he's been here for money. He signed a confession. Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's that's, that's, that's that. Excuse me. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Mr. Carrington, will you get the plane ready right away? We are leaving for Las Vegas. Las Vegas? Yes. You could expect me to stay after what happened to poor Tom Walker. You know, you had a narrow escape up there in the veranda. Why, what do you mean? I got hit on the head again. Uh, by the way, something very valuable was taken from me last night. Oh, really? And I stopped at nothing to get it back. You know, Countess, if I were you, I wouldn't trust myself up in a plane with me. Why, why not? Because I'm tired of getting hit in the head all the time. Well, Carrigan, I understand we're leaving. It's a good thing, too, after what happened to that poor chap, Walker. Yeah. I've heard a lot of nice things about Las Vegas. I that I should see them. Great place for sleeping. Yes. What? Oh. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Carrington. I, uh, I got quite a collection of these labels. I got some very valuable ones here, too. The, uh, is Exeter in London, completely demolished during the war. There's, uh, Singapore, there's Shepherd's Hotel in Cairo, Shanghai. Oh, here's a funny little place in Japan. I bet you've never even heard of it. I can't even make it out myself. It's a sabi. Oh, the cherry festival. That's pretty good. You must have flown in the Orient. Yeah. Well, well let's get going. Hobie! Hobie! You simply got to take me to Las Vegas with you. I can't stand this place another minute. I'm afraid that's out of I'll even help pilot. Oh, don't have to look so smug about it. I always could fly as well as you. My license is right up to date. I'm sorry, Irene, but the plane is chartered. It's quite all right, Miss Edison. Thank you. Okay, excuse me. I believe we have a little unfinished business. You mean about the dinner with the soft lights and... Oh, I mean the letter that your ex-wife stole from me last night. May I have it? Suppose I told you I didn't have it. I wouldn't believe it. Well, I haven't. All right, Captain. What's your price? Listen, sister. That might be your racket. But it's not mine. Why, you insulting little... Just a minute, Dolly Lorraine. I'm tired of being pushed around by you and your playmates. You can take a commercial plane from here. I'm leaving. Well, a 
it's the first decent break we've had so far. We made a bargain with Carrington, and he won't go until he's dismissed. I'm sure Mr. Carrington's bargains are no better than his words. I, for one, am not surprised at his loose code of ethics. There's nothing wrong with my code of ethics. And as far as I'm concerned, you're no bargain. Mr. Carrington, your attitude is insulting. Have you forgotten that your contract is you not... stick this on your suitcase. What's the matter, no room? There's not enough room in this whole town for that bunch and me. Mr. Carrington? Thanks. Excuse me, madam. Where are you going now? There's somebody else I've got to tell off. I don't care what you say, Donovan. I've had enough. I don't mind being insulted or having my pockets picked. I'll even go for one slight bash in the head. But when it gets to be a habit. And on top of that, I was questioned for murder. Now, where were you when all this was happening to me? I was arranging for someone to be booked for the murder. What do you mean, arranging? He confessed, didn't he? <laughs> He's been confessing to murders for the last 10 years. That's what we pay him for. And you let the murderer get away? Right here to Las Vegas. The man that killed Walker is going to lead us to the map and the people connected with it. But Mr. Rule, this uranium deposit may prove to be one of the richest in the world. That was proven by the tests that the Japs made. Then uh, why didn't the Japs develop it? It was impossible. Our bombers wouldn't let them. The whole thing is submerged in shallow water off an atoll. It's impossible to find. Then how do I know that you can find it? Because I have the map. The only map. What's the price of this map? Uranium isn't cheap, Mr. Rule. That's what atomic bombs are made of. We knew the Countess was a phony. And that letter verifies our suspicions about Claude. Sure, he was working for some kind of an engineering firm in East Indies. When the Japs invaded, he made a deal with them. The Japanese were working on atomic energy then. All they needed was uranium. Could have been a valuable man to him. All that hooey about the Japanese prison camp. Imagine them letting him run around with a valuable gold ring. Why, they rob you blind the minute you get there. A ring? What kind of a ring? Strange oriental affair, you know, with the moon and stars. It's supposed to have some kind of a legend connected with it. Well, I've got to shove off. Wait right. a minute, wait a minute. You're not going anywhere. Who says I'm not? You're going to stay around here and find out about that legend. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rule, the best business deal you ever made. Thank you, Claude. Oh. Just what I needed. Liz. Uh, the Countess de Frasco Maritza, Mr. Rule. How do you do, Mr. Rule? Uh, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, by no means. Please, uh, join us. Claude, I didn't know you had friends in Las Vegas. Mr. Rule has a ranch up here that he uses to breed horses. Oh, so you breed horses, Mr. Rule. Oh, it must be a fascinating business. Well, it's really not my business. But if I had my way, I'd spend all of my time at my ranch. Countess, Claude. Hello. I was just going for a ride. Mr. Porter, Mr. Rule. Mr. Porter is a member of our party. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Good to know. Mr. Rule, if you're acquainted around here, perhaps you can tell me somewhere where they have some good saddle horses. Mr. Porter, you're in luck. I was just telling the Countess about my ranch. It's only eight miles from town. Is that so? I breed saddle horses. Well. Oh, I've got mighty spirited animals, Porter. Be glad to have you ride any one of them. Thank you very much. Come on, I, I'll call my ranch and tell them you're coming. That's very generous of you, Mr. Rule. You're doing me a favor. <laughs> they need exercise. Oh. Uh, Claude and uh, Countess, uh, please uh, join me for cocktails later. later. Will you? We'll be delighted. What did you have to butt in for? I told you I'd get you some money. Claude, I have been a fool trying to get some money from you. In fact, we've been both fools working against each other. What do you mean? The map you were trying to sell, who? Listen. Oh, save your breath. I know what you're up to with Walker. You see, Claude, you don't trust the right people. Walker wanted to buy that letter from me so that he could get the map from you at his own price. 
You mean you tried to double-cross me by selling that letter to Walker? I ought to slap that silly smirk right off your face. What difference does it make who double-crossed who? Who could have done the same thing as Walker tried to? Buy my information and trade it to you from your map. And all this because you refuse to confide in me. Now, are we partners? Mr. Carrington, I'd like to talk with you. I even went out to the airport to find you. Jean's still waiting at your plane. If he fools around with that plane, I'll... He's waiting to apologize. I, uh... I had a talk with Miss Allison last night, and she told me what happened to you. I'm sorry. That's all right. Think nothing of it. All you gotta do is watch his mouth and don't pull him up too fast. Oh, that's fine. Say, Mr. Rule has a very interesting layout here. You say he breeds horses, too? Yes, sir. We cross quarter horse stallions with thoroughbred mares and get some mighty fine saddle horses. We got a beautiful stallion in there now, but he's wild and vicious. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> hey, look out there. Whoa, boy, whoa, boy. Didn't I tell you we had a wild stallion in there? Well, that's a man killer. We can't get a man around here to handle him. Oh, is that so? Yes, sir. Well, I hope you haven't got any man killer instincts. Oh, don't worry. He'll give you a nice ride. Uh, right down the gate there, and you can turn left. Oh, is that the trail that goes by the airport? Oh, about four miles down. Oh, that's fine. That's just a nice ride. Thanks yes. very much. Come on, boy. Okay, boy. To the airport, please. They lived with me all during the war. You see, I had a house in Honolulu. And you stayed there for the duration? Yes. This was wonderful, the way she helped entertain the troops. Yes, I can believe that. And Porter, is he an old friend of the family? Why, yes. How did you know? I'm psychic that way. <laughs> He's certainly been very nice to us. He read about Claude coming home from the prison camp and came to see us. Said he was an old friend of Dad's and was there anything he could do? Well, Mr. District Attorney, any more questions? Yes. When are you going to tell me the uh, Oriental fairy tale about this ring? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to ask Claude about it again. Well, let's make up our own story. Let's see. There's a moon and a star and a date. It reminds me. What are you doing tonight? Oh, nothing. This is all right. It's kind of fun being alone like this. Well, I uh, wouldn't call it being alone with all these people around. Well, at least we're not being followed by Jan, Claude, or the Countess, or Porter. Or an ex-wife. Hobie? Hobie, you've got to help me. I'm in a jam. I'm sorry, Irene. Not tonight. I'm all out of things to do for other people. Now, look. I helped you out last night when you asked me to. Excuse me. I'll be back in a minute. This time. Gregory Lawrence just called me from Death Valley. He made it after all. Good for Greg. I knew he'd make it. Oh, be serious. I want you to fly down there and pick him up. If that's your idea of being serious, you can count me out. All right, then let me take your plane. I won't hurt it. I'm still not serious. That's a fine way to treat me after I stole that letter for you last night. Oh, here you are. Shall we uh, join the others? Delighted. Say, how do you think you'd be at stealing a ring? Don't change the subject. I was talking about... You want to about... borrow my plane, don't you? All right. Good girl. 
Contest dogs, you move from my side. You're bringing me luck. Oh, I won. Isn't that wonderful? You did? Yeah. <laughs> Look at all the chips I have. I'm hey. so sorry. You'll have to excuse Miss Allison. She stumbled. It's quite all right. Stop her. Call the airport. Tell them you're on your way. No wonder people go around beating me over the head. Well, here it is. Good. What'd you get? Stop asking questions. I don't mind telling you, I feel like a first class heel. A lot of things you have to do you don't like doing to get your job done. What bothers me are the things I have to do to get your job done. Hey, hey nice take it easy. Get out of the field. Pick up your field. Oh, what about the deal with Wool? I'll settle everything. When does he pay off? Tonight. Fifteen minutes. My ring. What about it? It's gone. You sure you wore it tonight? Of course, I always wear it. Claude. Claude. Look, Kathy, don't bother me. I'm busy. But I. Look, you forgot your chips. Want me to cash them for you? Thanks, old boy. I'll do as much for you sometime. Mr. Rule, if you have some business to attend to, go right ahead. I'll play for you. I have been playing in luck tonight. Thank you. I'll be back shortly. Kathy, there are a lot of things I'd like to talk to you about. Telephone call for you, Mr. Carrington. Okay. Excuse me, I'll be... Back in a minute, I know. Chloe. Chloe, just a minute. Where's Miss Forrest? I just left her. What do you want with her? Plenty. The ring that you said belonged to her is a map I've been looking for. Mr. Mr. Carrington, your call is still on the line. Just a minute. Hello? Yes, this is Carrington. What? You got a car, Donovan? Yes, why? Irene just crashed at the airport. Crashed? Oh, hello, Mr. Rule. You seem surprised. Are you expecting someone else? Well, I didn't expect you. By the way, uh, what did you think of my horses? Oh, they were good. They were very good. But I didn't come here to talk about horses. Sit down, Mr. Rule. Uh, are you interested in uranium? Well, uh, hmm. World sources of atomic power. Then you always were interested in strategic metals. Let me see, it was uh, bauxite in South America, tungsten in Borneo, now uranium. It seems that you've made a considerable amount of my business, your business. Investigating agents of international cartels is my business. It's a lot of rat. Every businessman who tries to make an honest dollar 
is accused of being part of an international cartel. You know and I both know that no one ever made an honest dollar in an international cartel. And so, Rule, our government fully intends that that map will not fall into their hands. What map? The map Claude Forrest is trying to sell to you. It's my duty to warn you that we've been fully informed as to just how deeply involved you are in this. If that's Claude, I'll tell you what to say. Hello? Uh, yes. Uh, Claude? Uh, this is Ruel. Uh, yeah. Why can't I come to your room? Come out to your ranch? I'll find it. I assume that you'd rather we take Forrest into custody out on your ranch than here in this room. There might be some unpleasantness. That's all right. You government men think of everything. Oh, just one more thing, Rule. There's a plane leaving at 11.40. I know what you mean. any consolation. That was no accident. It was a pure case of sabotage. Why would they want to kill Irene? Because she knew the Countess was a phony? They didn't want to kill Irene. It was you they wanted. They thought you were taken off tonight. Do you know that every member of that party was at this airfield one time or another this afternoon? Not Kathy. I don't believe she'd have anything to do with it. We'll soon find out. Let's go to the hotel. Tell you? The rule tell me what? Give me that map? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. The one you've been trying to sell rule. Look, I've gone to a lot of bother to get that. After all, traveling around the country with you for six weeks is not my idea of a pleasure joint. I have a letter that you want. Did Liz sell you that? No. Walker had it. You mean you took it from Walker? He was hardly in a position to hand it to me. Here, take it and read it. Come on over here where the light's better, over here by the stall. What's the matter with that horse? Oh, nothing, Claude, nothing. Just a wild horse. He's a killer. I'm getting out of here. You're not going anywhere to give me that map. I wouldn't dare use that gun. Everybody would know you shot me. If they found you in that stall, it would look like an accident, wouldn't it? All right, Mr. Rule. Make that two tickets. If I can't watch Claude, at least I can keep an eye on you. I miss you, Uncle Lavi. But I tell you, I haven't got the map. You have to have it. For a while out in the islands, I thought Van Bush had it, but he's only a fortune hunter trying to marry Kathy. Then I suspected the Countess, up until last night. But she wouldn't have tried to sell Walker the letter. She'd have sold him the map. So? So? I still haven't got the map. Give me that map. I haven't got it. Kathy's got it. It's her ring. I'll get it for you tomorrow. Call her up. No, Hold up I, right now. I, Do as I tell you. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, of course. I'll be there right away. All right, dear. Who's that? It was Claude. He wants me to go out to Mr. Rule's ranch. Kathy, I forbid you to go. Oh, stop it. Oh, 
Cassie, you'll never get Claude to stand on his own feet if you don't stop tagging after him. Jan, will you please leave me alone? Oh, but Kathy! Oh, Liz, you must do something for me. Will you have a talk with Kathy? Oh, not now, Jan. Please, not now. you want to hold me? I told Porter everything I know. He's the one said I should leave town. Oh, Porter told you to leave town, eh? Yes. Where's Kathy? She went to the Rules Ranch. You let her go out there alone? Look, Carrington, I'm not responsible to you for any of my actions. As a matter of fact, there's only one way to deal with you. You never will learn. I'm telling you, Porter is at my ranch right now arresting Claude. Porter is not arresting anyone. You Porter, mean he is not? Bring these people in and book. You stupid little man. You sure she's wearing the ring? You know she always wears it. I told her never to take it off. I told her there was a legend connected with it. How do I read it? Well... The star is north, and the sun is east. The date represents the latitude and the longitude. The trident represents water. The whole deposit is submerged in a coral reef in shallow water. with an accident, would you? I don't know what you mean. I want that ring with a map on it. But I, I lost it. I haven't got it. What? Hello, Kathy. Let's get out of here. But what is this all about? It's a long story, not a very pretty one. Let's go. Thanks, Donovan. You finally paid off. You evened up the score. The score is never evened up. As long as men like Porter are still alive. George is all yours. Don't forget to sweep out the rice. Okay, Hobie. I got another flight for you, Hobie. Are you kidding, Donovan? You know I won't do any more jobs for you. Yes, but this is right down your alley. It's a wedding in Las Vegas. And I'm going to be the best man. Not a chance. I'm booked for the weekend. And besides, there's too many people getting married. I heard what you said. You know what I mean? Fine thing, having Donovan propose for you. What kind of a girl are you? Just for that, I have a good notion to... So have I. Hey, George. 
never mind about the rise.